Hello, my name is Victor. In this in-depth tutorial, we'll be taking a look at how to work with Quixel Suite with Unity 5 as our target engine. We'll also take a look at how to set the textures and materials up in Unity. For this project, we'll be using the blacksmith character from Unity's blacksmith tech demo, for which the suite was used for the texturing. So, to get started, I'll simply load the mesh, this one here. The character I'm using can be downloaded for free from the Unity asset store, and there are more assets you can grab from there as well. Usually, I personally don't use more than one, maximum three uh, mesh groups, but in this case, there are several more. There's actually seven. So this is a good example to show off how to work with a lot of mesh groups, so that's great. What I'll do is that I'll simply load the input maps, and I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch me plug them all in. But most of them have a material ID and a normal map. Some have AO and so on, and the rest I'll bake directly in 3D using the GPU baker. And I'll check bake in 3D. And I'll also have um, also set the export target to Unity 5. And I'm not I won't be using the metal nest workflow, so I'll instead use the specular workflow, which is this one here. And there we go. For the hair I already have a texture prepared and I'll paste that into my DDo project later on, so I'll leave this blank for now. And same thing goes for the eyelashes. So I won't have an input map here, but I'll bake the um, object space normal, curvature and position gradients for both the eyelashes and the hair. And um, just when you create your project, double check the resolution, double check the export target and um, also which folder to save it in. I'll just go with the default one, and uh, next I'll hit create. And now 3 is baking the input maps for the different mesh groups. And there we go! So let's check it out in 3 do. Alright, so... As you can see here, we have our different uh, mesh groups, as we saw in the base creator. And we can also check them out here. We can, by selecting the mesh groups here in this drop-down, you can isolate the, um, the uh, selected mesh groups. So you only see that one. So now you see the eyes, for example. And now you see the armor. This can be very useful when you just want to focus on one part of the model. So if I just want to work on the like swords, I can isolate it to just the swords. It's just less distracting and can sometimes increase the performance as well if you have a heavy model. I'll just turn, turn it back to all groups. And I'll just resize the window a bit. There we go. To navigate through, do we use the same controls as in Maya? You hold Alt, left mouse button to orbit, Alt, middle mouse button to pan, and you hold Alt, right mouse button to dolly or zoom. And to rotate the skybox or the light, you hold down Shift and right mouse button. And by holding Shift, Control and right mouse button, you can also adjust the rotation in the up and down axis as well. I'll just set up a very quick post process uh, so we have a nice base to work from uh, or work with. So I'll just uh, load the clean highest quality preset here and I'll enable high quality resampling, sharpness and sharpness post pass as well. I'll also enable a screen space segment occlusion or SSAO and I'll adjust the intensity a bit. Just adjust the settings slightly and physical, uh, simulate physical camera. This brings up a whole lot of options here, such as depth of field, optical vignetting, chromatic aberration, and so on. Um, settings uh, that simulate the effect you can see in a physical camera. 3D is built entirely with Unity 5 and uses the exact same shading and lighting, and all the post processes that are available in 3D can be grabbed from the Unity asset store. 
and I also browse through the different um, skyboxes. I do this by pressing the left and right arrow keys on my keyboard. I think this is pretty cool. But I think I'll go with this one. This has the nice sort of bluish light as well as the orange. And this is the first one here. And I'll reduce the intensity of the light to around 80 or so. And maybe a bit more optical vignetting. I really like that effect. I'll just check out the contrast and saturation as well. See if that can do something cool. Something like that. And I also enjoy working with a bit brighter uh, backdrops. And I also enjoy using the optical vignetting here um, for that. I like to increase the scale and reduce the intensity to give you to create some sort of gradient background. I think this is a pretty good starting point. All right, so let's go ahead and create some skin for this guy. Um, the first thing you want to do when working with a lot of mesh groups is to make sure you're in the right one when you start working. And one easy way to make sure is to simply select the mesh group you want to work with in this drop down here in 3 and click it to isolate it. And in this case, it's skin that I want to work with. So I'll go back to all groups and make sure skin is selected here in this drop down. And the next step is to open the Smart Material Browser. And under Organic here, there's a very good uh, Smart Material that I like to use as a base for most skins. And it's called Alien Skin. So I'll go ahead and create this. And it's out of the box, it's a bit over the top, and it's got some funky colors going on. But with a very small amount of tweaking, it can really look well. And there we go. And the first thing I'm noticing is that it's got quite a bit of specularity going on. So what I'll do is I'll simply go in here and I'll set the brightness to all of these layers to 11. And there we go. And I'll also increase the um, glossiness a bit here. So the skin base color around 50% or so and the skin color a bit as well. That's looking pretty cool. Yeah. And as you can see, the colors are, as I said before, quite funky. So what I'll do here is I'll start off by changing the purple here to more of a red. And I want it to be quite bright and slightly saturated. There we go. And I'll change the skin color to more uh, a less saturated color and a bit darker, I believe. That's looking pretty human. And the blacksmith here, um, as is made for the Unity scene, uh, is, is quite pale. So I might actually make him even less saturated and maybe something like this. Yeah, that's a lot better. Perfect. Okay, and something else that I really like to do, uh, usually when working with characters, is um, to kind of fake um, uh, subsurface scattering. And the easiest way to do this is to simply create a new layer uh, by holding control to create an overlay layer instead of a regular layer with normal blending mode. Um, as you can see here, it's got overlay instead of uh, normal. And you, you can you can change this blending mode at any time. I, I can go change it to linear dodge or color dodge whenever I want. But by holding control and clicking this button here, you'll create a color overlay layer instead. And I uh, set it to be a bright reddish color. And I'll use this layer to, as I said before, is kind of fake the subsurface scattering. And the way I like to do this is by going into the Dynamask. I go into the quick mode now by holding Alt, by the way, and enable object space uh, normal or object space direction. And I'll set this to normal. 
and I like to invert the top to bottom like so by clicking this invert button here. This will change the direction from top to bottom to bottom to top. I'll decrease the gamma, maybe a bit more to around 35 or so. And then I'll increase the exposure. And I'll increase the gamma again to around 40. I like this. One thing I want to do first is to remove the white mask from the underside of his arms here. I don't want the underside there to be so red. So what I'll do is I'll go into uh, this, this menu here and change the opacity to around 30. And I'll simply paint out the areas I don't want the red to appear. So I'll go over the hands here and the underside of the arms and just mask out the worst areas here. I don't mind the armpits being red, but you can decrease the intensity a little bit there. I'll do the same thing on the other side as well. Same thing on the hand there. And something like this. Yeah. And I might actually even increase the intensity a bit around here. Something like that, yeah. And I'll accept the mask and we can take a look at the result. Um, I'll in decrease the opacity in all the maps at the same time by holding control and dragging. This is because I don't want the simulated subsurface scattering to have any sort of influence on the reflectance of the skin. So by holding control and dragging this, uh, it adjusts all the uh, maps at the same time. So if we check the gloss map here, for example, the opacity is zero, same for normal, and the same for specular. And now I'll go back into Albedo, and I'll simply drag this one up, not holding control, just uh, click dragging to around 50%. And look at that, it's looking pretty cool. I like that. Awesome. And before moving on, there's just one final tweak I want to make, and that is to reduce the opacity a little bit to make it a bit more subtle. Something like that. Perfect. Okay, so the next step here is to add some personality to his face by adding some color variations around his eyes and his uh, lips and so on. And I'll do this by creating a color paint layer by clicking the Add Color Paint Layer button here at the bottom of the DDo UI. And this will create a new layer above the currently selected one. And this layer has, an, uh, has a button that no other layer, layers has, and that is the toggle color paint mode. By clicking this, you toggle on and off, or the painting mode on and off. And it brings us into the painting mode here in 3D. You have a lot of options here, uh, such as switching between brush and eraser mode, which you can also access by pressing B and E on your keyboard. Brush for, B for brush and E for eraser. You can also access the brush menu, the opacity slider, the color palette, or swatches, and proximity, symmetry, and so on. And symmetry is the one I want right now, so I'll enable this. And if you open up the menu here, you can choose to show the symmetry plane or not. And this turns on if you enable the different axes. And in this case, I want the X axis to be enabled. But I don't want to show the plane because now I know which axis we're working with. So I'll just disable show symmetry plane while still keeping the X axis enabled. So with this fixed, I'll just uh, zoom in a bit closer. I'll set a good color, a bit more red, something like this, and maybe a bit less saturated. I'll also set the opacity to around nine. 9 or 10, something like that, and I'll find a good brush. And by navigating, so to navigate the menu here, you just hold left mouse button and drag left or right. And I'm after something organic, so I'll click the organic tab here, and I'll choose a suitable brush. I like to use this one when working with faces or skin, because it's got some nice pores going on. 
So I'll leave the brush menu and I'll start painting by choosing the brush tool instead of the eraser. So as you can see here, it's painting on the other side of the face as well. And I like to start off by just going a bit over the top because it's just easy to erase it later on. So I'll just go like that and then I go into eraser or actually I'll increase the file, uh, brush size first and then go into eraser. And then I'll start chipping away at the colors here. You can also go into the different or individual map preview modes by clicking the numerical keys on your keyboard. So one for albedo, two for specular and so on. I'll just adjust the colors here. Make it a bit less pronounced. And I'll go in and add some more reds to the, um, like closer to the eye. Nothing too over the, the top, just a bit of color variation here. Okay, so let's move on to painting his lips here. So I'll simply switch to a more of a blue color here and just like before, I want to use a very low opacity for the brush here. So switching between the PBR preview mode and albedo to easily, more easily see the changes made. There we go. And now I'll just increase the brush size and paint a bit around his lips as well. There we go, and switch to eraser and start chipping away once again. It's looking pretty cool. I'll just go in here and add a bit more red to around his eyes. Something like that. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so let's click the toggle paint mode button here and um, we can adjust the, um, the opacity. So let's drag it down to around 50% here to see how that looks. Maybe a bit too much, so I'll drag it up to maybe 70. There we go, great! Okay, so let's continue on our path here to giving him, giving him some personality. And let's start off by adding some um, color to his eyes. And I'll do this very simply by adding a clean layer. By just clicking this button here. I'll change the color to a very dark, maybe around 5% brightness, uh, no saturation or anything in the albedo and I'll decrease the specularity or actually no that's a pretty good value I think around 20 22 and I'll check the gloss as well I want to make them a bit glossier something like that yeah that works and next let's move on to giving him some hair and as I said before I have some pre-made hair that I just um, want to uh, use in this project so I'll go ahead and load this in there we go and we also need some opacity for the hair so if we check this out now it's not gonna look very pretty so the easiest way to do this is to simply click this menu here add new map and add opacity There we go. And I have a pre-made opacity map for that as well. So I'll just load this here. And let's check 3D. There we go. So I'll reduce the, um, or I'll actually uh, load the albedo here as well. And I'll just desaturate it. And make it a bit darker. Very quick and dirty this, but it's gonna work pretty well, I think. Refresh it. 
Yep, we're getting there. And I'll just do the same for the gloss. Just paste this in here. And I'm gonna increase the brightness in the levels here. Let's see how that looks. Yep, looking pretty cool. So we have one issue here that's pretty glaring, and that's the scalp. We need to um, go into paint mode in the skin and just paint out some some dark uh, color in this, uh, like in the base of his hair. So let's do that straight away. So go into the skin group here, and I'll add a new color paint layer, just like before. I'll use a soft brush this time. This one. And find a suitable color. Something red brownish. Maybe something like this. Use a pretty low opacity. Not as low as before. Maybe something like this. And I'll just start painting. I'm gonna let it bleed out a little bit. Um, outside of his uh, hair. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'll just follow the outline of his hair. And now I realize I should have used the symmetry, but yeah, it'll be an easy fix this. I'll just continue tracing around. Erasing if I go outside. Oh, and by holding B and right mouse button, you can adjust the size of the brush. Yep. And to make the, the next part easier, I'll just go into the options here and isolate the skin group here. So now I can just go in here and start painting away at the other areas of his head here. Actually, I'll enable the symmetry now to make that uh, this part a bit easier. There we go. By pressing fix seams in the top right corner of 3D, you can eliminate seams as shown here. This is done automatically when exiting paint mode. And there we go. So let's enable all the groups again and go out of uh, paint mode. That's a lot better. Cool. And I'm gonna go back into the hair and adjust the specularity and the gloss here. I'm just gonna add a adjustment layer, brightness contrast, and increase the brightness. I want a bit more specularity in the hair. And I also want a bit more brightness on the gloss. By holding control while clicking the refresh icon, only the current map is refreshed. Yeah, there we go. That's a lot better. Cool. Okay, so let's go back and do some, do some final tweaks to his skin. I'm noticing the gloss is a bit too high, so I'll go back here and adjust these uh, this slider here. I will lower the opacity for the stripes and veins because that's a very... Um, I don't need that layer. And I'll also reduce the glossiness of this one. There we go. That's a lot better. Perfect. Yeah. So I'll do a second pass of the post-processing now, now that I have something more to work with. I'll just adjust the previous settings to new values here. Something like that, yeah, cool. Right, so let's move on to giving him some color on his outfit here. 
And I think I'll start with the armor, which is this part here. It consists of several, um, or no, three different material IDs, and they're all leather. So let's go ahead and actually keep this isolated. And what I'll do is, first of all, I will work with this um, green ID, because I want this to be um, uh, sort of a red leather, and uh, treated leather. So sort of shiny and a bit red tinted. So sort of like this color here, and this might actually work. Let me just check here, compare these two. See if there's another one. I'm gonna go with this one and see where, see where this takes us. So what I just did there is I held down C to preview the color ID map directly in 3D. And then I uh, pressed down and held shift while I clicked it. That opened up the material browser. And uh, by selecting the material I wanna use and pressing create, it creates the uh, material on only that ID. So let's check this out. This is looking pretty promising. I like that. Cool, okay, so let's keep this um, as it is right now and move on to the next one. So I'll do the same thing here. I'll hold down C and shift and left click the orange ID here. And this one I want to be more brown, like towards the orange uh, direction. So I'll just browse through here, see what I can find. And I have one personal favorite and that's this one. So I'm gonna try this one. And now it asks me if I want to add this material inside the currently selected group, which I don't want because if I, if I click yes here, it's gonna add the material to the previous ID or the group that is linked to the uh, other ID. So I'll press no here and that'll create it only on the one that I uh, clicked in 3 do. There we go. And it's a bit too dull right now. And so I'll increase this, make it a bit more bright and maybe a bit more saturated, or less saturated, but at least a bit brighter, I believe. Something like that. And also adjust the leather base. Yes, getting there, maybe a bit too bright. I'll try reducing a bit again. And yeah, let's go with that. But I'm not done here, because this one has some really interesting shapes going on here. It's like it's been um, uh, almost braided. So what I'll do is, first of all, on top of everything, I will create a new layer by just clicking Add a Clean Layer. And what I'll do with this is I'll work with the cavities of the um, uh, ID here. So I'll go into Edit Dynamask. Or actually, I'm going to demonstrate how the Dynamask editor works when you're not in quick edit mode. So I'll set this to be sort of a dark, kind of dirty color here. And I'll, actually I can do that later. So I'll just click the mask button here. And I want to go into full shaded mode here. So I'll click yes. All right. And as I said before, I want to work with the cavities here. So I'll be using the curvature. And first of all, I'll set this to be normal, because the default one is linear dodge. And since I'll almost only be working with the uh, curvature, I set it to normal. And there we go. And if you want to see the mask more easily, you can either click show mask up here, or you can just press M, as in mask on the keyboard. So, the first thing I see here is that we have the wrong mode enabled. We have edges on, and I want it to be cavities. And let's preview that. And as you can see, now we have the mask inside the cavities instead of the edges. And I want this to be sort of, sort of intense, so I'll just increase these ever so slightly. There we go. And I will also be adding a texture to break up the um, mask a bit, to like make it look a bit less um, um, uniform. So let's see if there's a good fabric we can use. 
that's leathery. Yeah, I'll go with this one. Let's try that. And what I'll do here is I'll increase the contrast quite a bit. So as you can see here, it's breaking it up a little bit here. I'll try and increase the contrast even more. Yeah, there we go. But that's a bit too much, so let's go back to around 65 maybe, see how that looks. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so let's accept this mask. And I'll adjust the specularity. Bring that way down to around 4. And also the gloss. Way, way down here. There we go. I'll set this to multiply. And as you can see, that's way over the top. So I'll need to bring this down to maybe even 50% here. Even more. Let's try 20. Yeah, something like that. Maybe even a bit more, like 13. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay, and I'll reduce the specularity, uh, the opacity of the specularity, so we get some underlying uh, texture information going through. Yep, and what I'll do now is, now that we have the cavities um, uh, defined, I want to go ahead and add another layer. This time I'll hold control once again to create an overlay layer. So what I'll do now is I'll um, use almost the same workflow, but this time I'll work with the edges instead. So I'll choose a bright sort of yellowish color. And yeah, that is the appearance I'm after. What I'll do is I'll also reduce the specularity. Because I want the edges to be very rugged. Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. So let's go into Dynamask. And enable curvature. And once again set it to normal. I'll go into mask mode. And I want to bring down the bottom part here. So instead of uh, clicking here and waiting for it to update, you can hold down Alt while adjusting these values. And when you're editing the last value before you want to preview, you can just release Alt and click it. And that's going to update. So that's sort of what I'm after, but I want to reduce the soft, I believe. And increase the fine. And up the contrast. Yeah, I like this. This is nice and uneven. Let's try that out, except the mask. Yep, it's breaking it up a bit. Cool. So let's reduce the opacity. Around 60, see how that looks. Around 70. Yeah, that's looking really cool. Right, so for the last one, let's step out here so we're not inside this group and let's add a new, um, like the final leather to this mesh group here. And for this one, I want a darker one, a darker worn um, armor. Maybe this one, one of these. I think I'll try this one, the dark brown leather armor. Yeah, that'll work. That's a very good base to work from. Right, so what I need to do is I want it to be a bit brighter. Just a little, little bit here. Yeah, something like that. And I'll reduce the specularity with a couple of percentages here. So let's try 11. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So let's check it out 
how it, how it looks on him. So we can see here it's a bit overall too dark for him or too contrasty. So let's go ahead and brighten it up for him so it matches his like the overall tone here. Yeah, that's better. And let's go back and adjust the red one here. A bit less saturated and a bit brighter. A bit more. Yeah, that's a lot better. Cool. Yeah, let's go with that. So let's continue on by working on the next piece of clothing here, and that's the leather metal group here. And this contains quite a lot of stuff, but not very many mesh groups so or color IDs. So this will go pretty quickly, I think. So let's go ahead and select the leather metal, metal, metal uh, mesh group here as well. And I'll go back to all groups. And let's see what we should start with. Let's start with the metal. Like all these rings that he has going on on his arm and in his hair and so on. So I'll, um, once again, see shift click the color ID and I'll browse through this browser here and see if I can find a good one. I think this might work. Got quite a lot of rust and stains on it. So let's try that. That's looking pretty good. Cool. Yeah, I'm liking that. Let's go with that. Cool. Okay, so next up, let's go with the orange, um, orange leather here. And I'm thinking I'm gonna go with once again something dark, worn, and I might even go with this one and tweak it a bit. So that, actually, let's try that. Yeah, I think that gonna, that's going to work with a, as a base here. But I want to make it brighter and not so saturated. So let's fix that. And also a bit more towards the yellow spectrum here. Yeah, there we go. And it's also a bit too... I think it's a bit too glossy. I'm not sure. But let's go ahead and do something similar as we did last time and create some edge wear on it. And this time I'll make it less bright, maybe a bit more saturated. Let's see how this looks. Let's increase it a bit. Cool. And I'll once again reduce the specularity to around 13. Yep. That looks really rugged. Perfect. Right, so let's edit the mask here. I'm pressing Alt, left mouse button on the mask button there. And I'll be working with the curvature. There we go. And something else you can do to make the results even more believable is to activate the ambient occlusion. This will mask out all the areas that are occluded um, in like crevices and so on. So I'll increase the tightness of this and also up the contrast just a tiny bit. All right, I think that's gonna work unless I'm gonna add a texture in. Yes, I think that's gonna look cool. Let's try that. So once again, I'm gonna find a nice, I think I'm gonna go with this one. This one, yeah. And once again, I'm gonna up the contrast. Even more. Yeah, let's go with that and see how that looks. Yeah, I really like that. Just gonna check out the 
Albedo, Gloss, and the Specular. And if you press, uh, for example, if I go into Albedo mode by pressing 1 and press 1 again, it's gonna go back into PBR preview. Same thing goes for Gloss and pressing by pressing 2 and then pressing 2 again. That's also gonna bring it back into PBR. It's just, just a toggle between PBR and the uh, corresponding texture preview mode. So I think that works pretty well. And I'm, un I'm unsure if I should make it brighter. Let's try upping it just a little bit and pull it even further into the yellow-orange uh, side. I'm actually liking this. I want to bring the gloss down a tiny bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's looking, that's looking really good. I can just keep doing this all day. It's just so much fun tweaking. Yeah, this is perfect. Yes, so let's go with that. Perfect. Cool. Okay, so let's see what we have left here. Um, we have the cotton here for his pants. We have some his sheen protection here and some stuff going on on his shoes. So let's go ahead and add some cotton here. So let's see here. I want to find something dirty. Maybe dirty cotton natural. Maybe this one. No, let's go with the dirty cotton. It's looking promising. Let's see how it looks all together. Yep, that's gonna work. I wanna make it darker and more brown, yellowy, yellowish. Something like that, maybe. Yep. That's great. Look at that. Really, really cool. Okay, so let's go with his leg guards or whatever they are here. And this is also going to be leather. And I'm thinking something really, really worn. Yeah, actually, let's go with this. I think that, that could work. Nice. All right, let's just isolate the selection here. Yeah, I really like this. But I really want to add some pretty over the top edge wear to these as well. And I'm also going to try doing something here. I'm going to try and limit the um, limit the mask to just the bottom part here. I'm going to make it a bit brighter here. And once again, I'm going to reduce the specularity. Yes. And let's edit the mask. Let's go to curvature. Set it to normal, or actually multiply this time. And I'll increase these sliders quite drastically and up the contrast. There we go. Actually, bump these up even more. There we go. Cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna try this here. I'm gonna try enabling the gradient direction here. And what this is, is it's a RGB mask. Um, one channel goes top to bottom, one channel goes left to right, and one goes front to back. Um, so using this, you can decide, you can mask out, um, mask out or mask using depth and height and so on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the top to bottom one, which is enabled by default, and I'm going to invert it so that the bottom is um, masked or masked in. And I'm going to try adjusting the balance and offset here, increasing it quite a bit. And I'm also going to use offset here the other way. There we go. 
and I'm gonna back up with the balance and adjust the offset and on, down here under post process options th these are the settings that control all the masks and uh, that you have enabled here so using that I can adjust the tightness contrast brightness and so on and in this case I want to adjust the tightness a bit and then up the contrast maybe even the brightness a bit there we go so now there's less edgeware at the top here and more at the bottom and that's exactly what I want so I'll accept this mask and uh, check it out yeah there we go cool okay so we're almost there we have almost everything textured now we have, all we have left is the swords I believe so let's go jump into that group here swords and I think I'm gonna be using the same material for those as I used for the rings let's try that so I'll, this time, instead of C shift clicking, I'll simply create add a smart material, go into metal, just like usual, and I'll navigate to the um, to a good material. I'm just checking real quick here to see if I can find some, something that might work better. I think that's gonna work well. Let's quickly browse through here. I'll go with this one. Let's try that. Yeah, that's not bad. Cool. Right, so we have a really good base here. Um, but before I'm calling this done and moving on to Unity, I really want to just tweak it just a little bit more, such as the skin. Just try and balance it out a bit more and adjust the values and so on. But yeah, this is a really, really good, really good point. Okay, so let's bring things together a bit more. Uh, the thing that sticks out the most to me is the skin. Um, the skin and the clothing is a bit too far apart when it comes to uh, values. So one thing I like to do um, for a skin and or characters in general is to use gradients and uh, I thought I'd try this so I'll add a clean layer and I'll make it a bit dark somewhere towards sort of like a skin tone but way darker something like that and I'll do the, uh, the trick where I hold control, drag the opacity down, which controls all the map's opacity. And I'll bring the albedo one up again by not holding control. And I'll edit the Dynamask. And like I previously did, I'll use the gradient direction here. And once again, I will invert the top to bottom and adjust the balance and offset. Something like that. And I'll use the brush tool here to mask out the arms because I'm not that interested in having the arms um, affected by this. I mainly want the torso here to be um, affected. So I'll just, actually I'll clear uh, what I just did and I'll enable symmetry there we go all right so I think that's gonna work uh, let's just adjust the contrast a bit there we go. Let's try that. Cool. So it's a bit too much, but let's drag it down to maybe around 80 and see how that looks. 
cool. And let's just disable and enable the visibility for that layer. See, yeah, it really makes a huge difference. It really just makes these two parts blend together so much more. And I'm just gonna try changing the blending mode to multiply and adjust the opacity and see if we can get a better blend going. Nope, let's go with the, um, what we just had. I think that's a bit better. Something like that. And I'll also try and change the color a bit here. Maybe a bit more towards the, r the red here. Yeah, that's better. Cool. And I also want to change the skin color a bit to make it a bit darker. Uh, a bit darker and a slight bit more saturated. That's better. I'll change the skin base color, make it a bit more towards the orange here and a bit less saturated. Now we're getting somewhere. It's looking really good. Yeah, I'm really liking this. Okay, so what I'll do next is I'll add some war paint to this character. And if you've seen the blacksmith video by Unity, you might have noticed that his entire left arm is completely covered in charcoal or something similar. And so that's what I'm gonna try and reproduce here. So I'll make sure my opacity is set to 100% or one. I'll select the round hard brush and I'll set my color to be a dark, very dark, gray or almost black. So I'll go with this and I'll just start by covering his arm in 100% almost black here. Make sure I get every single crook and nanny here. I'll reduce the size as I get closer to his armpit. If you're noticing that you're getting seams, um, you might not have auto fix seams enabled. So if you don't, you just have to press uh, fix seams up here. But having it on or on auto fix is generally a very good uh, pointer. So I'll continue down here around his chest area here and I'll reduce the size of the brush and move up his face here. And just erase here and I'll do that later with another brush. But I think that this is a pretty good start. So what I'll do next is I'll find a good sort of rectangular brush to create the um, lines that will go, th uh, go along his scar tissue tattoos. And I think this might work really well. So I'll select this and adjust the brush size by uh, holding B and right mouse button. And I will rotate it by holding B and left mouse button to align it with his tattoos here. And I'll just click here, hold shift and click up here. And that's gonna create a straight stroke between the two points or the two clicks. There we go. I'll also f um, fill this one here, the uh, sort of diamond shaped thing. Like so. And I will use the eraser tool to remove the inside part here. There we go. And I'll also fill these uh, straight lines here on his abdomen. That's looking cool. All right, so let's do this face as well. I'll reduce the size 
and fill this in here. And this one at the bottom should be a bit longer, I think. There we go. Cool. All right, so let's make this look a bit more painted than um, sprayed on. So I'll just look through here and see if I can find a brush that's gonna work for that. I want sort of a cloudy, a bit soft brush. Maybe this one and reduce the opacity quite a bit. And I'll use the uh, eraser tool, increase the size, and I'll start chipping away. There we go, start to look like something. And I'll be erasing on his fingers as well, a bit. There we go. And maybe down here as well, reduce the size a bit and just chip away. There we go. And I also want to add some dirt to his face here. So I'll be using the brush tool again by pressing B. As I said before, you can toggle between brush and eraser by pressing B and E on the keyboard. So I'll be using the brush tool, increase the opacity, and I'll just sort of stamp out some brushes here on his face. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so the last step will be to work with the gloss map here. And to do that, simply click the gloss tab this will bring us into the gloss mode here. And to make this a bit easier, um, we will be simply be using mask, using, and then albedo. This allows us to only paint within the areas we painted in the albedo map. So if we go into gloss preview here, I'll select a default soft brush here. I'll be painting with white, and I'll increase the opacity. So I'll increase the size here, and I'll just start painting away. And as you can see, it keeps us within the boundaries of where we were before in the albedo. And if you notice the slight slowdown there, that was the auto fix seams in action. So when you stop a stroke, that's gonna fix the seams of your, when you work. And there we go, it's been fixed. Perfect. So back in PBR mode, you can notice that the war paint is very, very glossy. And we'll fix this by going out of paint mode. And I'll reduce the opacity to around 12, something like that. And I'll do the same thing for the albedo to around 80, 85, something like that. Increase it a bit more to make it a bit darker. Yeah, that's looking really cool. Let's check it out with his clothes on as well. Yeah, that totally works. Cool. So I quickly went over the post processes once again. And I also changed the skybox here to this studio setup, which, is, which has uh, got a lot of contrast in it, um, unlike this one. So I went with this instead, and I also tweaked the post processes slightly. And I also brightened up the skin to match the uh, original character a bit more. So what I did is pretty much I just created a new layer, uh, which is which has a little bit of red in it and just very bright. Lower the opacity a bit and I also added a little bit of ambient occlusion to uh, add some more depth to them. And that's all I did. This animation was created using 3D Animator. At this stage I would say um, I'm ready to take it into Unity. So let's um, take a look at that. To export the textures into Unity, 
all you need to do is click the export button up here. And what I've done is I've selected the first texture group here or mesh group. And next I click open the exporter and this will open up the exporter dialog. And first up here, you can select the path in which to save it. So what I'll do is I'll click set path and I'll navigate to my unity project folder. Next, under here, you can select the name of the texture set, followed by the suffix. And you can select by map, uh, different variations of map, and M, and uh, you can also choose which format to save as. I want to save as TGA, and I want it to be 8-bit, and 100% of the resolution. You can choose to have it a quarter of the size, half the size, or 100%. And lastly, and the most important one, is the export target. You can choose from a wide array of different renders and game engines. And I'll choose Unity 5 here. The irregular one, not the metalness for this case. And next, simply click Export. Export finished, perfect. And what I'll do next is I'll select the next one here, the eyes. And this will update here, and it's gonna keep the same path. And I'll just click export. And there we go. Let's take it into Unity. Okay, so here we are in Unity, and I got my mesh set up. He's been posed and located in a nice position and all the textures are loaded in seeing as when I exported I set the export path to be the project folder of the blacksmith scene so what I'll do now is I'll just go over the different materials and plug in the textures so I'll start off with um, the armor here and I'll simply just drag in the albedo the aim and occlusion the specular and one thing worth noting for the normal map when working with unity is you will need to go into the options or the inspector for the normal map set the texture type to normal map and make sure it's not set to create from grayscale and then click apply so I'll go back here and plug in the normal map so if we check the game view here we can see it's been plugged in and looks really good so I'll go ahead and keep doing this, I'll just keep plugging in the textures. And there we go, so let's go ahead and check out the game view here. I'll just drag this out so we get a bit higher resolution view of it. I would say that looks really good. Let's start game mode and fly around a bit. Yeah, I'm super happy with that. Cool. I really hope you learned something from this tutorial. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.